Hello again. The purpose of this short video is to introduce a couple of different ways in which we can interpret uh, Machiavelli's The Prince. And the reason why I want to do this is so that you have an understanding or a sense of the other videos that you're going to watch as it relates to uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s understanding of civil disobedience. So there are two general interpretations that we might take with regard to Machiavelli's The Prince. The first interpretation of The Prince is that Machiavelli was offering us a vision, a way of thinking about ruling if you're the, the person in charge of ruling, if you're the governor, let's say, uh, the prince, where your interest is not merely in protecting and providing security and a good life for the community, rather, as the prince, as the person who's ruling over certain subjects, your interest, your primary goal is to protect and provide security for yourself as the sovereign over certain subjects. Now on this first interpretation, which is the by far the most common interpretation, this interpretation takes the prince, the ruler, to be ruthless, to do whatever it takes to protect his own authority. And this interpretation is oftentimes associated with contemporary politics, politicians who just are interested in, in winning elections, getting your vote regardless of how they get your vote, lying to you and just dealing with whatever those ramifications might be later on, making certain political calculations in anticipation of future elections and maintaining your political power and authority rather than what is best for the people in the particular uh, community or society. And you can see how this is really contrary to the sorts of views of politics that were offered by Aristotle and Plato, and even as we have talked about with regard to uh, St. Thomas Aquinas. But there is a different interpretation of the prince, which I think is important to understand. We can interpret Machiavelli's prince as a kind of a warning as a way of saying, look for these signs. These are the things that you should be wary of. These are the things that you should be paying attention to. If you have rulers or politicians that are, are acting in these ways, then, then you should take note of that and, and, and use those sorts of signs and signals to identify unjust laws, unjust rulers, and so forth. So these are two very different ways of interpreting the prince. I'm not trying to suggest that there's any correct way that you should interpret uh, Machiavelli's work. Clearly, there is one interpretation that's been more dominant than the other, namely interpreting the prince as a, a, a blueprint for how to maintain one's own power has been far more prevalent in modern society than the, uh, the less common interpretation, which is more of a blueprint uh, signals and signs to pay attention to, which you can then use and apply to your own society, to the rulers and governors of your own community. Still, there is a third reason why I want you to pay attention to uh, Machiavelli's work, specifically as it relates to strategy. One of the major themes that comes to us from Machiavelli's work is that politics involves practical reason and not merely having your head up in the clouds, uh, wondering about the perfect city, the perfect ideal soul and so forth. Rather, it involves getting your hands dirty, really digging into the weeds and, and, and trying to get to the bottom of what is going to be the best strategy in order to achieve the particular ends and goals that you have. And as that relates to Dr. King's own political philosophy, why he included Machiavelli's prince in his syllabus, because of course, on the one hand, this is a very important work that comes to us uh, with regard to political philosophy and with regard to modern society in general. Machiavelli is commonly used as a paradigm example of totalitarian rule or tyrannical rulers. But we might also think about uh, Dr. King's inclusion of this in the syllabus and the way in which he may have taught this particular reading, this, this literature 
to his students, insofar as Machiavelli provides us a window into the strategy that's involved in politics. And it's that strategy that I want you to pay close attention to as it relates to uh, Dr. King's nonviolent resistance to the political ruling authority of his time. And so that's just my way of introducing the next few videos that I want you to pay attention to. So the basic idea here then is I want you to think about the strategy that's involved with nonviolent resistance. Why Dr. King might have thought that was important uh, in a class on social and political philosophy.